Hello guys, it's Revolution. In this video, we're going to talk about the upcoming battle of Ultra Instinct vs. the Hakai destruction, if you will, between Goku and Vegeta, who both now have senseis, I guess you could say. We know Whis has been training Goku and Vegeta a lot, but he's training Goku to hone his Ultra Instinct, to master his Ultra Instinct, whereas Beerus seemingly is now training Vegeta to master his Hakai ability. Now guys, as I said in my review, in terms of how Vegeta is actually going to utilize the Hakai ability in a fight, you know, I need to see something of it to really make a decision on how it's going to be useful because right now, is he really just going to go into a battle and Hakai the opponent on the spot? Of course, if he's fighting an enemy or an evil antagonist, that's great. But, you know, if it's going to be between him and Goku in a fight, he isn't just going to destroy Goku there and then, is he? Anyway, I'll get to that in a few moments but what I want to touch on first is obviously Ultra Instinct for Goku has allowed him to achieve a completely whole new level he's extremely powerful with Ultra Instinct and pretty much out of nowhere Beerus has decided to start teaching Vegeta Hakai now obviously the fan base has been split on whether or not Goku has surpassed Beerus I'm sure you all know my thoughts on the matter now I've had these thoughts for the longest of times in terms of my scaling right now you can scale Ultra Instinct Goku's low ball above Beerus's low ball but they both cross a threshold and we don't know how much above that threshold either of them go for example if Beerus's full power is more above that threshold than Goku's full power is etc but whilst that's what my method of scaling would suggest, look, I'll be honest, if I had to put a bet on it, if I had to put money on it, I would bet on Beerus being stronger than Goku. I'm not saying there's no possibility of it being the other way around. I'm just saying that's what I believe the story is implying. I believe that's where the story is leading. I believe it's leading to that eventual rematch between Goku and Beerus or even Goku and Vegeta versus Beerus. And the Oracle Fish's prophecy of them rivaling Beerus is the crux the overriding narrative of all of these arcs. But even I think this has gone on too long, and whilst I will enjoy the eventual rematch between Goku and Beerus, you know, I'm not saying it's particularly good writing, it's overdrawn, in my opinion it's stale. Like I said in my review, we'll get a good grasp of exactly how strong Vegeta's newfound Hakai abilities and Goku's Ultra Instinct abilities measure up to each other when they fight against Granola. Now, the interesting thing about that fight is, is that it's highly unlikely that Vegeta with his current level of Hakai training has surpassed Beerus using his full power Hakai abilities. And given that Granola is supposed to be the strongest in the universe, you would imagine that Goku will have to tap into his Silver Head Ultra Instinct. And like I said earlier with Vegeta and Sakai, I don't really know how this is going to play out, but I imagine he's eventually going to use Super Saiyan Blue and Hakai abilities at the same time. There's still a lot of conjectures surrounding how he's going to use it. I would imagine it's going to be in a similar way to how we saw Destroy Topo in the anime of Dragon Ball Super. I don't, I'm not saying he's going to get that kind of form, but I believe he'll probably have that kind of energy. I won't be surprised if he <laughs> turns into Super Saiyan Purple like many people have predicted and how I've cheekily put it on my thumbnail. But of course, Vegeta's got his uh, earring now that he got from Beerus, the God of Destruction earring. A lot of people in my Discord have pointed out that, you know, most of the Gods of Destructions don't even have these earrings. Do they all have Hakai? I would imagine so. Beerus did say that the Gods of Destructions don't really use the Ultra Instinct ability, as that is the technique of the Angels. It doesn't really suit them, and that they generally all have the Hakai abilities. I imagine to very varying different degrees. I know it's seemingly becoming a bit of a joke now how much it's implied Beerus is above God of Destruction Belmod. And I know some people still don't think he necessarily is that much above Belmod. But if he hasn't trained or hasn't increased his power since the Tournament of Power, if he is at current Ultra Instinct Goku's levels, then, you know, that gap is absolutely enormous. And I'm not against Beerus training since the Tournament of Power, by the way. I actually think it's probably better than what we're getting. I just think they need to... Do something unique with it, maybe training in Whis's staff or something of that sort, something godly to explain why the power he's equated over hundreds of millions of years is somehow managed to multiply in the space of a few months because that part of it for me just seems a bit wonky. But then again, guys, this is Dragon Ball Super. This is Toyo Toro we're talking about. So nothing would surprise me. But if he hasn't trained, then the gap between him and Belmod is monstrous. Now, I guess you could say it makes sense in some regard, as Belmont's only been a God of Destruction for a, around 200 odd thousand years, and Beerus has seemingly been a God of Destruction for hundreds of millions of years. So, obviously, amount of time training doesn't necessarily mean stronger, but 
What it does imply is Beerus has been training with the Hakai ability for an extremely long amount of time. And obviously because of the nature of the God of Destruction Battle Royale, you know, he wasn't fighting against 11 other characters all off the same level. They were all varying different levels and that can explain certain elements of what occurred during that Battle Royale. But interestingly, during that Battle Royale, if you've seen the coloured version, we see that all of the Gods of Destructions have purple auras, which is a bit similar to what we saw of God of Destruction Topo from the anime. I imagine if Vegeta powers up that he's probably going to have a very similar aura to a God of Destruction if he's using Hakai Energy. Now here comes the confusion about what kind of key these users are using in Dragon Ball. Now I had an idea of what I was going to put out in a certain video talking about key variations in Dragon Ball, regular key, God key, as well as all the sub keys, for example, Genki, Shoki, Yuki. And I personally always thought Hakai was a separate kind of energy. I'm not sure if it just uses God Key to use the ability or if it's just a godly technique. You don't. I'm putting these out as kind of question statements here. I want to know what your thoughts are down in this in the comment section because what confused me is when we got to the end of the Moro arc and they started talking about God Power. Now, God Power naturally for me, I would have thought, well, that must mean God Key. Then we saw that the Grand Supreme Kai had an enormous amount of God Power that far exceeded Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta and allowed Ultra Instinct Goku to get stronger than even before. And we know that Goku and Vegeta in terms of power vastly surpass any of the Supreme Kai's. I mean, even Zamasu was considered a gifted Kai in terms of martial arts ability. And he got that Rick rolled that he had to like steal Goku's body and make it his own. And even then it weren't enough, he had to fuse with another Zamasu to become merged Zamasu. Look, it doesn't mean that the Grand Supreme Kai isn't stronger than what Zamasu naturally was, of course. But you know, it's just putting it out there that the Supreme Kai's or Kai's, they got vastly surpassed ages ago. We even saw in the God of Destruction exhibition match when Rumshi did his roar, the Supreme Kai's, they were done out there. Goku was completely rattled, even the other Gods of Destructions were completely rattled. I know it's a hack's ability that Rumchi seems to have, but, you know, the Supreme Kai's were stated as to not being at the level to be able to endure it. So when the Grand Supreme Kai's energy that we got from Oob got sent to Goku and it was that powerful to make Goku actually destroy planet Moro, it was kind of just like, what? Is that actual God Key or is it something else entirely? Is it related? I honestly don't know. Uh, that put me off making the key variation video because I just felt we need more information on this. Because even if it is God Key, obviously the Grand Supreme Kai uses it in a very, very different way. As we saw in his battle millions of years ago against Moro, he wasn't able to take down Moro with power alone. He had to use magic ability. That's something else I want to get onto as well. I don't think Hakai and Ultra Instinct are the only godly techniques. I believe there's more. I believe there's probably some sort of Supreme Kai, God of Creation branch of godly techniques that could be useful. Probably not as combat orientated, but probably still effective. Then maybe you could go further and go into the demonic realm. Obviously, if there ever brings a llama in it as well, he seems to have magic abilities, which seems to be something very inherent in the Namekians. You know, they could take Piccolo down that route, make him relevant again. Of course they're not. It's turning back into the Goku and Vegeta show. And I know some people will say he's always been the Goku and Vegeta show, but actually, I would say that the rest of the cast got a good showing in the Tournament of Power and the Morowak. You know, they could have Gohan learn some of the Supreme Kai godly techniques, Piccolo learn Zulama techniques, Frieza learn demonic techniques. I know I'm going quite far out there with this, but you know, that's what could be in the potential future of Dragon Ball if they wanted to explore it. Bring some of these characters that people actually care about back into prominence rather than keep creating new characters and making them super strong out of nowhere. I mean, if destruction is considered a godly technique, then maybe creation should be considered a godly technique as well. Anyway, enough spitballing ideas. Back to the yeah, purpose of the video. So, it was a bit of a dispute as to what is actually better between Ultra Instinct and Hakai. Obviously, most people would lean towards Ultra Instinct, as a lot of people believe that Ultra Instinct Goku surpassed all the gods' destructions. I'm not saying that definitely is the case, but obviously Beera seems to believe that using Hakai energy, using this godly technique of destruction can surpass Goku's Ultra Instinct. Goku made the comment that after all of this training that he's done with Whis, even after we'd seen him master Ultra Instinct in the Morowak at will, as well as hone that level of Ultra Instinct and then train with Whis, Beerus feels that Vegeta using the Hakai can surpass Goku. And after Goku boldly made the claim that no one will be able to beat him now, Beerus responded by saying, Vegeta, go and show everybody against Granola that destruction 
is better than that angel ability. Now, obviously, to prove which one is the best one or who is the strongest, who has the best attacking output, they're going to have to perform better against Granola than the other one. This is great for us, guys, because what we're ultimately getting, finally, is a direct comparison of feats between an Akai user and an Ultra Instinct user. And it's highly suggested that that Hakai user isn't at the level of his Hakai Sensei, I guess you could call him. Now look, I'm not a fan of Hakai overtaking Ultra Instinct this quickly, personally, but I do believe that's where the story is leading, otherwise I don't believe they'd be wasting this much time on it. At some point, Vegeta will rival Goku with his newfound ability. Don't get me wrong, I know all too well that this will last about one chapter, then Goku will shit on him again. But ultimately, what Ultra Instinct, Mastery of Self-Movement, this Angel ability and the Hakai ability seems to be doing is multiplying their power and adding on a specific Hacks ability, I guess you could say. Hacks is probably the wrong word, just an ability or a technique alongside power. Now, both of them are seemingly learning this in their base forms, but I do believe they will transform when they come up against somebody worthy of transforming against. That should be Granola by all effects because he's supposed to be the strongest in the universe. If they're only competing against Granola in their bases, that would look a bit silly. But it's very possible that Hakai just has a greater multiplier than that of Ultra Instinct in terms of attacking potency. Obviously, it doesn't come with Mastery of Self-Movement and the defense mechanisms you get with Mastery of Self-Movement, but it may have a bigger multiplier in terms of power. Base Vegeta could be weaker than base Goku, but the multiplier for Hakai could be bigger than that of Ultra Instinct. It's like, a Saiyan who can only turn Super Saiyan, fighting against a Saiyan that can turn Super Saiyan 3, but the Saiyan who can only turn Super Saiyan's base power is 20 times stronger than the Saiyan that can turn Super Saiyan 3. That Super Saiyan would be stronger than Super, the other Super Saiyan 3 Saiyan. Now that's just an example, guys, of how an Akai user, even if his base is weaker than the Ultra Instinct user, could be stronger than an Ultra Instinct user. It could also work vice versa in favor for Ultra Instinct if the opposite was to be true, this is just an example guys, I really must put that caveat out there because we just don't have enough information regarding this, but that can explain how Vegeta is somehow managing to either rival or even surpass Ultra Instinct Goku because this ability just has an extreme multiplier. The next chapter should tell us, but Vegeta seems confident about it, Vera seems confident about it. While she could say that Goku and Whis also seem confident about it, Whis in particular is not denying that it's possible for Vegeta to rival or surpass Ultra Instinct Goku with the Hakai ability. Look, I'm a Vegeta stan. I have been for 20 odd years. I've taken massive L's over Vegeta time and time again. It never seems to end. We all know that this is going to come tumbling down for him at some point. Goku will end up the strongest. I accept that. I'm okay with that. I think that's how it should be. This is Goku's story. Now what we do know is obviously Whis is naturally an Ultra Instinct user. That doesn't mean he doesn't have Hakai ability as well. Beerus is promoting Hakai as the best godly technique seemingly anyway, but what we do know is that Whis is stronger than Beerus. Beerus has confessed that Whis was stronger than him way back in chapter four of the Dragon Ball Super manga, right at the end of the Battle of Gods. And obviously we saw when Beerus and Shampoo were fighting that Whis and Vados came in and basically one-shotted both of them. Anyway, guys, that's all for this video, really. It's just explaining the Ultra Instinct vs. Hakai and how it's going to go moving forward. You don't have to like it, but we'll see what happens. I believe we should let things play out before we make a final judgment. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comment section. But obviously what we're getting is Hakai and Ultra Instinct seemingly rivaling each other as techniques. However, it must be said that it's highly likely that Whis's base is just vastly superior to that of Beerus's, as well as the fact it's likely that Whis doesn't just have Ultra Instinct, he has a plethora of other techniques as well. We've seen numerous hacks performed by the angels, and we haven't seen as many performed by the God of Destruction. I would like to know how he managed to turn the Elder Kai into a sword though. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Smash that like button and lend the Daishank in your energy. Until next time, Ad Astra.